a planet of Suo in uh, search of Eugen. You've landed in a small village to keep your ship safe. You've got your cargo ready. The new crew network is up. And once you step outside, the heat of the two blazing suns above is cooking the planet. The large stone-like structures built across this valley with the small huts in it are casting shade to cool the homes within. Ah, that yes, said, just like I remember it. <laughs> that being said, currently, how is our, um, well, fishy friend keeping hydrated on this long journey? Kane steps outside of the ship with, like, some sort of weird-looking umbrella hat on that's dribbling moisture onto his face. <laughs> I fully expected you to come out in a spacesuit, but filled with water. <laughs> He's got some, uh, <laughs> it's just like a weird little dribbling hat thing. <laughs> What's the matter, Doc? You don't like the weather? He's got like a canister of moisture on his back. I'm not a fan of this heat at all. This is very uncomfortable. You're gonna have to put up with it for a couple hours. Don't worry, Captain, I don't intend on whinging about it. Right, and given time for Astrid to make sure all the sort of food supplies and other bits we're taking for Eugen's there, um, we head off. Right, do you grab any uh, transports in order to bring the gravelifts with you? Do you hire any mounts, or are you literally trekking on foot? I thought we, um, I thought they could attach to the speeders. You could, but you're not going to be able to go as fast, of course. That's fine. Yeah, okay. In a hurry. Don't I know any That's locals fine. that might give us a hand? Well, you may. You have a few connections around. You can try a streetwise at a, a dice up bonus if you wish. Sure, why not? Sounds like fun. Maybe there's a few locals around that uh, can give us a little help. So basically, one purple then. Well, if you have one purple in it, then you may upgrade it to a yellow. Uh, no, I mean the difficulty. One purple? Yeah, one purple. Oh, uh, too bad. I guess uh, nobody's around. Mm. Yeah, sadly, you do know people. It's clear to you that you know people, but uh, they're not around right now, apparently. Often some sort of hunt, you know? Uh, looks like it's just us. Let's handle that being, it. That being said, as you're talking to people, the rest of your group who have uh, gone to see the inside, do you see the people you're talking to have very bright red skin? Oh yeah, it is a desert world. Yep, and they're, they're dressed more tribally, but they still have droids and the basic moisturizers and the like, like... But otherwise, yeah, sadly you can't get anything unless Does you... Do by any chance look like demons? If you were to... So they're basically, yeah, humans with red skin. So okay, I was I thinking, like, are they Deveronians, you know, who literally look like demons and have horns and all that shit? Oh, no, no, they're just huge. They basically, if you want to base that on, it's humanoid, pure humanoid with red skin. Wrong they're not saying that. Shiny in them all. We, we talking Native American red, or are we talking Dark Maul red here? Like actual red. Dark Maul <laughs> like, red, okay. Yeah, like re red skin, yeah. <laughs> basically, if you Some cut them, you wouldn't tattoos. be able to tell that they're bleeding. Oh, there's something poetic about that. <laughs> Yeah, they have white tattoos on and the like. They're cool, once right. you get to know them. We'll, we'll start tracking along then. Okay then, off you go. <laughs> You're going out into the desert sun. Now, would somebody please give me a survival roll while you're Who's tracking? Who's best there? Not me. Hang on. Uh, can I reduce the difficulty since I've spent a lot of time here again? You may give them a blue dice. Oh, okay, uh, that I've got the highest cunning out of it. Should probably do it then. Yeah, yeah. get a blue <laughs> dice like from me really... then since I've lived here for a while. Or as like you like really to call it, call it your entire life. I mean, get it, you're an old lady. 
<laughs> surprisingly less frail. Oh, mm, come on! Christ Jesus okay. Christ! Right, your managers stay on track. The general direction of Eugene's place, you all practically know it by this point. However, you did not expect there to be as well. The sands have shifted since last time. There's a m much more dips than hills, and you find yourselves lagging behind somewhat, and you find that your water supplies are getting a little bit lower than normal. Would you guys like to roll resilience to the sun? And the kinds, I'm gonna say, due to your race, red dice. You're, yeah, you're gonna get uh, yeah. probably a red dice for this. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Do fair. I get any bonuses because my suit is vacuum sealed? Yes, you may get a. I believe it's a blue dice for this. No, wait, it's not. Is it temperature controlled? Um, I would assume so because it's vacuum sealed and What's cold a is it's very. A... It's cold. a separate thing. Wait. Space isn't technically "quote unquote" cold. It just saps uh, heat. But are um, you like? Because there's an actual upgrade called temperature control. No, I don't have that. Ah, so yes, you may roll with that normal. Oh, I know what I'm gonna buy next. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm well, to be fair, it's situational. But otherwise, since you're a tinkerer, you can just take it in and out anyway. So. <laughs> you just want to buy the mod and replace it now and again. Alright, let's see. God, everybody's getting to spares. Those aren't the spares. Those are threats. I, no, I mean threats. I keep calling them despair. Shut up. <laughs> Fishy? I've got three advantages. I'm holding up alright. Wait, where's the red dice? It's right there. I've oh, there Ash, are you turning blind or something? What's happening right now? I'm sorry, I'm blind. Oh, God. I'm going to increase the screen. Right. So, essentially, our fishy doctor is not exactly holding out for his well as everybody hoped but he's able to keep a hold of most of his water so you do take like two strain but sure. you're you basically are keeping your water at a safe distance you're quite smart at this you're like yeah. gotta pace myself the rest of you you do manage to just push through the desert heat and physical exhaustion but in doing so you are losing even more water uh, Cora's gonna turn to the dog and say, Hey dog, uh, if I spit in your face, is that gonna help? Is that some sort of a bad joke? Well, I mean, if it You'll works, you know. It. <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Jack? That you'll get used to it. <laughs> Doesn't seem in the mood for any sort of banter. He's grimacing slightly, you know, he's struggling along. I'm just gonna casually toss him my uh, water flask, uh, or at least what remains of it, without saying anything. Yeah, he catches it and nods. Right. right I don't know why none of you brought a hat. Jack says, adjusting his wide brimmed hat. <laughs> it's like the best on the series. <laughs> Well, okay, you know that my not. hair is white and thus perfect for this condition. She says that she makes a fucking cap out of it, you know, to protect her <laughs> face. <laughs> Wait, uh, what? Astrid's wearing her full armor and she's just kind of staring at you as you fashion your hair into a hat. Well, technically you also have something called robes that you could pull up. Nah, the hat works better because it's white. <laughs> Astrid uh, just kind of face palms a bit, and yeah. By the way, you do find that Cora's hair has grown a lot since you've cut it. By the way, Astrid, since she's showing it off, it's not as long as it used to be, but it's 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 oh, getting there. I'm never cutting her hair again. Yeah, I spent like point. two hours on that hair, and she immediately grows it back out. Hey, it's not my fault. I mean, no need to take it personally. Technically, it is your fault because it you was back to the It was fault. explicitly your fault. <laughs> I still yes, think I you did a fine job. Someone. If oh, you retire God, and become still... a full-time mom, maybe you can work <laughs> at the hair salon. <laughs> Astrid Jack, is, is that... giving you a look again. Jack, you is can't that for see uh, it, but she's wearing a helmet. Has. Yeah. 
But is it, it's just like an umbrella hat with dripping water on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Right. <laughs> Currently, you're going through the, a large valley of sorts. The jutting stones are getting bigger and broader. The homes situated in the shade are getting more sparse. These areas are more dangerous than commonly seen. You know the dangers of this place. What in a few of you have been here before. There are giant lizards. There may be even crate dragon or two around here. There are, of course, also, well, beasts under the sand that make it shift and move. It's User been a while since I've been on a good hunt. Hey, Sibby. What's up? Hey, Sibs. Oh, uh, what happened? Sorry, uh, dinner, basically. And I had to move a saw. Right then. So essentially you're going towards Eugene's place on the desert sea of Sarai just to catch you up. We have been yep. traveling, I'm just going to assume you rolled just about as well. You're running low on water, but haven't taken any real strain as of right now. But... As I was saying, you're traveling through the valley, there are a few homes here and there. You do have to be careful, but since you're using grav lifts and speeder bikes, you're not physically touching the ground, I so just take it. Yeah, no. that should oh. make things much easier. Yep, there's actually one second. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there's plenty of people. You have three bikes and five people with you. That's perfect amount of people. Since I suspect Core is on our own bike. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the boys right. went for all the trouble to get it for me, I might as well use it. One moment, let me do a little bit of a roll. Oh yeah, Sibby also rolled uh, Destiny. Oh, I actually rolled the wrong flipping thing. I will do that. Hey Ash, since they have no ability, what are you rolling Kick. for? Dark. Pardon? I was gonna ask, what are you rolling for? Because oh. I have no ability that uh, influences your rolls now. I, I need to know these things. You have no idea that something's being rolled okay, or fine. happening. So you can't influence what you don't know. But don't worry. Right, so essentially, as you're speeding along, all you see is the sudden earth shake you look around confused and suddenly off in the far distance you see this giant like worm creature burst from the sand chasing what seems to be smaller flying creatures before you hear and it slam into a rock face and fall down back into the sand what's that thing called again it's essentially um uh, Talon Worm. Oh, yeah. It's a bit giant things. They, ch they think of them as the vacuums of a desert. They chew up what's in the desert and then clean sand comes back out. Oh, yeah, those are cool. Uh, if we have some time, we should hunt one of those. It's always fun. No. No. Oh. Poor Cora, back home, can't hunt worms. It's been a while. I was hoping for a good hunt, but okay then. How do you know it won't try and hunt us? It oh, it will. That's the secret. Whenever they try to hunt you, you just hunt them better. We so I thought that we're going to be staying away from the Dune Worms. We're not too far away from Eugene's place. Excellent. Right, would you all like to give me one more resilience? And Klein, since you're more in the shade at this point, you may get rid of the red. Thank since you. the bare sun is not beating down on your butt. Ha boy, ha boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. Yes, Simmy. You did. Uh, did <laughs> standard two diff. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, where the fuck is my spacesuit? Resilience. There, we're, there it is. Oh, my resilience is uh, actually shit. Wait. Uh, no. Ash. Mm hmm. I'm assuming there's nothing prohibiting me from uh, utilizing the force. No. 
Not really. Great. I'm going to commit my force, my one and force dice to increase my brawn, which will increase my resilience. And I still roll like crap. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, Tizza, you get two strain. Doc, you get four strain. But both of you, water is quite good. Astrid, you are completely fine. And also still have some water left. Cora, you lose two strain, but keep your water. Jack, you... I actually don't have no water strain. because I gave it to uh, Doc. Oh, yeah, you do. Fair enough, so you don't have water, so take an additional one strain. Uh, but can that uh, uh, reduce the stress on him? Actually, yeah, I'll allow it. I'll allow it to get rid of one. So yes, only two strain for you, Clanes. How do you pronounce that? Canes? Canes? Should I just, just say Just Canes, but he's canes. a Mon Calamari, which means they slur their words constantly. Okay, Canes. Right, so Canes that uh, gets two strain. Jack, you're fine, but you lose all your water. So essentially, oh, you're good. And we're carrying a massive delivery of water, food, and other supplies. Then. <laughs> so essentially, as finally you come to the place you were destined to, eventually you come to what appears to be a rather exotic hut within the middle of nowhere. He triumphantly failed. <laughs> Got rid of some strange stuff. Wait, what are you doing oh, with yeah. venison? Just getting rid of some strain on oh. myself. If you triumphed, I would say since this is heat-based and not anything directly affecting you, you're essentially going to heal the strain over time as long as you're like out of the sun. Cheers. So this should be gone. Since you triumphed, you're basically just treating the little bits of sunburn and all that stuff, you know. Yeah. Pulled out some Nivea after sun. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck sunburn. Superior robes with hood. <laughs> I'm wearing a spacesuit. <laughs> and I'm adding for for Susan Road Master Race. <laughs> Shut up. So, uh, as we pull up our speeder bikes, I'm just gonna sort of loudly, uh, you know, shout over. Eugene, are you in? You hear no answer. Um. We're here a little bit early with the supplies. I'm gonna and as I duck into the tent to see if he's in. Right. As you duck into the tent, what is the other people doing? Uh. Very quickly, during this time of day, does he have, uh, you know, some kind of schedule or something? Would I know uh, where the possibility is of him, you know, being? Would he be back at his tent or somewhere out there doing something? You only know that he's essentially not there at around about evening. He should be at his tent all day otherwise. I'm just gonna start looking around the tent then. Okay. Ash? Yeah. How big is this little camp? Like, is, is anything here encompassed by short range? Yeah, it's in short range. It's not huge. It's essentially short range. <clears throat> cool. Uh, then I'm going to um, try to sense him. Like, uh, I, okay. What if I can lift him <laughs> there? Like, I just yeah, have to go in the I, I, <laughs> But still, I fucking fail. So, yeah, yeah. I'm going to spend a day like, so, destiny on that. No, I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell you right now. As a uh, call is going around the tent and Jack's inside, all you hear is. Kick. Oh, he's sleeping. Okay then. Top of the fucking kicks. What? He can't I'm just sleep? keeping an eye on everybody, especially Cora. That's not particularly unexpected. <laughs> I mean, he's in the middle of the desert. What do you want from the guy? You he's just... also old. Ah, uh, he's he not that old. You <laughs> Oh, what? what? He didn't oh. answer, so I let myself in. He sits up and adjusts his robes. He goes, Ah, uh, Jack, it's good to see you. Mm. One good moment. To see you too. He's going to stand up. Sit down on one of the cushions. Oh, I thought he was sitting. I was about to lounge on one of the cushions. <laughs> He's like, Oh, feel free to sit. I'm just getting out of a second. Oh, bones. Ugh. Come on, you're not that guys. old. You come in, I'm gonna be lounging like a Turkish bazaar. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Keynes comes through the door and, and gives the uh, Jedi a full-blown military salute. He's like, he's a, he looks a few moments and goes, gets it same back. He's like, and he's soldier. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet a Jedi master. Hands a loaf of dwarf at your service. 
Ah, uh, yes. Um, you may call me Eugen. He holds out his hand and gi gives you a hand to shake. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah firm shake in return. He doesn't correct you, of course. <laughs> I put in a... He's the new doctor on our ship. Ah, I see, I see. Now go without droid, then. Didn't end well there, actually. I rummage around and pull out the droid's head from my pocket. <laughs> Treason oh usually doesn't. Greetings. Master Shelak sends her regards. Ah, that old girl. Ah, uh, at least she's looking after me still in my old age. Quit talking like that, Eugene. You're not that old. Cool, uh, he's like holding out his arms for you. I'm just gonna give him a hug. He's gonna hug you back and then go, where's my money? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, Cora takes uh, the 10 credits she has to her name in her pocket and says, Here, uh, I owe you for the rest of it. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, never did pay back those uh, cards. <laughs> uh, there goes my last 10 credits, Cora mumbles under her breath. Fucking remembers like a goddamn elephant but keeps telling his old... Uh, I am old for my for, for my race. <laughs> I guess uh, I'm also Ash. inside. Hmm? Do I know which race it is from? Uh, one second, I can quickly grab it. Or should I roll something for that? You may roll if you wish. I believe that would be one moment. I gotta bring up uh, the yes, campaign details. That's not the correct thing. <laughs> Let's see, what would it would definitely be an education skill? Uh, yeah, probably education. No, xenology. Definitely xenology. Right. Alright. Well, I definitely nice. say this is oh, a balance in the force. The fuck? Where's Eugene's thing? There he is. Well, apparently success, but with threat, so. You um... <laughs> flicks your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure what the fuck that is means. You, you know exactly what he is, but it takes you a few seconds to work out the real name instead of the racial slur. Exactly. Oh my it's like, god. You're one of them. No, no not Nikers. What is it? Elves. <laughs> you're one of them elves. <laughs> Adam, I don't subscribe to racial slur. I thought you knew that. I said it was in your in your head. It takes you a couple seconds to, to discard the racial slur. Blood, yes. Uh. <laughs> there we go. I I'll show you this. There we go. Essentially, he's a keyway. I have no idea what it is actually. Out of character. Trust me, there's no a race like him. Dude. I mean, uh, okay, but okay, but wait, they're not lizards. Yeah, technically, he's not cold blooded. <laughs> Actually, like, are are they uh, mammals? Uh, you would probably yes. But they're not. But but evidently, they're not near human because otherwise, I wouldn't have the roles in knowledge. Think of it like this: you can see that little part; it's kind of like beak. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Old. Like a mix between a turtle and a dragon. Yeah, think of it like that. Oddly Check. enough, they normally do have hair, but he's bald. <laughs> like, normally they have, like, feathered hair behind their horns, but he's bald, so... Uh... So, you bring me my supplies. Yeah, we came a little bit early. Actually, been meaning to see you about a couple things. Uh, the always the same from people. Always want, 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 want. He says he's going out to check his supplies. I know, right? <laughs> Jeez. Bust open the first crate. The finest crate of Wookiee porn in the land. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, I think you gave me your order instead it's, of... It's that primo oh. shit you ordered. <laughs> I had to smuggle this out of his <laughs> Uh... Uh, it's just normal supplies. <laughs> of course. <laughs> One of these days, though. 
Jack accidentally mixed up the crates and get him, get him the Ifus crate instead. Whoops. <laughs> this is just full of cartel victims and porn. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh god, that means Ifo has the birthday cake. <laughs> and meanwhile, what? Sam got a single stick and he's like, what? Everybody's confused in this situation. Yep. But He's yeah, gonna look especially out Astrid. To go out to show him the, uh, the supplies and help him load them up. Yeah, he's gonna look at them and nod. Hmm, perfect. Uh, I've always wanted one of these. He says he's dragging out what appears to be like a small pipe, and then the other things such as root water, food, snacks. Collection of what passes for DVDs. Mm -hmm. He's essentially gonna hold out the small credit stick that he has for you. It's like here's your normal payment. Thanks. I'd, I oh, know yeah. how uh, young people like getting an allowance. He says he gives it, and he's about five thousand credits. We like Eugene. He pays well, and he never puts us in incredible danger unless he pays even better. <laughs> Eugene best. <laughs> I mean, I remember a certain scenario during during the one shot. Unless he pays even better. <laughs> I just specified that. It's like, hey, I'm gonna send you this on the suicide mission. It's gonna like get half the galaxy hunting you. Whoops. <laughs> uh, he's gonna. By this point, he's gonna come back inside and says, "Come, enjoy what you wish. You too, Cora." <laughs> she's already at home because she's literally at home. <laughs> I see you're resuming your Frito the ways. Yep. I mean, I figured you've put me uh, put up with me for 25 years. You can handle another night, right? Yeah, uh, you're right. <laughs> Actually, on that note, kind of hoping to cash in that favor. Mm. What do you mean? So I uh, lose my memory as an old age. And you he ask me to he's... take Cora onto the ship. Ah, uh, yes. You'd owe me one. Mm, kind of, I guess. Me and Tizza have a couple things we need to ask about. Uh, okay. He's gonna go over, sit on his uh, cushioned little phone type thing, getting comfortable, sit like he is sitting now, essentially. Cross leg to go. Alright. Ask away. And yes, they are real. Uh, wait, other character, what is he referring to it like, as is, as in they are real? His horns. <laughs> oh. Well, I already know which race it is, so I'm not gonna ask that. <laughs> on, Sibby. Get on, shit. Go oh, on. you want me to, to go yeah. first? Um... No, you had the vision asking you to specifically seek him out. True. I'm only doing True. it because I know a guy. Uh, by the way, Koro's sitting well, right then. next to him munching snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Well then, I have been told but not one, by not one, but two separate people to come here and seek you out. One was Master Shirak, obviously. The other one was you. He looks a bit confused. Me? Hey, I don't remember doing that. Well, obviously not you, as in you, you, but I saw you in a vision where you told me to seek you out. Ah, uh, the force. So poke it and put me in my old age. Okay. <laughs> what did this vision say? Um, fuck. Out of character, Ash. I don't remember anything beyond him showing up and saying, "Seek me out." If you wish to find balance, seek, seek me out. Oh right. Uh, <clears throat> well, word for word, the vision said. If you wish to find balance, seek me out. Hmm. And Sherlock also sent you? Yes. I see. Well, to clarify, she did after I met her again a few months ago, I think it was. I... I'm a He's... former former student of hers, and I left the order some time ago. 
You can see him raise his clawed hand. The dark nails that make up his claws are scratching against his rough, tough skin as he thinks. Well, if you wish to know about the other side, I suppose you came to the right place. I suppose so. And then there is this. And she reaches into one of the arms of her robes and brings out the seed. He's going to look at it. Mm. There is much uh, force about this. Very chaotic. He's going to look at it for a good while. Like he's, If you don't speak up, he's not going to say anything again. As if he's distracted by it. No, Cora, uh, Cora, derp. DNL just, uh, D DNL. Fuck, what DNL. the hell? No, like, wrong fucking character. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Shut up. Um, <laughs> much confusion. Uh, no, TC just waits for him to speak up again. I'm almost disappointed you didn't go in with your sister a battle name there. <laughs> <laughs> Seraphina, though. <laughs> No, she would, she would just jump jump into the channel and just go, PURGE THE Xenos! Yeah, otherwise he's gonna go, oh, that's interesting, and he's gonna lean back. It is, well, isn't it? So I suppose you want my help with this and that. Are you sure you want me to explain? Young people don't want to hear the details, they never do. They oh get no, bored. Eugen, this is different, trust me. Your interest is genuine, I can attest to that. Uh, the so more details, the better. Okay, okay, keep your socks on. Uh, fine. If you wear socks. I can <laughs> help you. I can help you with both these issues. But it's, uh, maybe a bit dangerous. Well... The vision where I saw you was given to me in a very old temple at Malachor 5. And this, and she points to the seed, I acquired on a planet which is essentially all one organism very strong in the force. Hmm. I see. He's going to lean towards core. That's the place you mentioned before, right? Yep, that's the place, alright. Okay. <clears throat> Well, you would of course see something with so much death and tragedy, but uh, if it drew you to me, then I uh, guess it's not too bad. I can definitely aid you with these things. In fact, probably both at the same time. It's going to take a while unless you want to take the fast route. Word to the wise Tizer when it comes to stuff like this, never take the easy road. There is no have... easy road. By the way, you, you just speak up. It's like, ah, that's just what those with an old funny desi say. If you want to take the fast road and you think you're up for it, you can take the fast road. What does this fast road entail, and how does it differ from the long road? He's gonna look dead at you and say it's faster. Oh, you seen this? Come on, T Rex! Oh, I'm an entire ass robot!